it wasn't enough for me to smoke. I needed something else. Ram says there are four, four steps of teshuva. And teshuva is more than repentance. Teshuva is completely returning to God, forsaking the sin, stop sinning, and completely remove the sin from his thoughts. Build a fence to keep ourselves from sinning again by learning about, and this, this is the miracle, the miracle of the truth that works for everything. Everything that is evil, that destroys our lives, whatever it is that's causing the damage, stop. And build a fence by distancing, distancing ourselves from whatever it was or is. And we, we can only do that by learning all the details and all the punishments for how, how severe a thing is. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, Do not remove them. Do not forget the things which your eyes have seen, lest you remove them from your heart all the days of your life. And at first I thought this was just referring to idol worship. But let's say just say that it's really everything, but especially for anything that affects our health, anything that's a physical damage. Especially, especially as the verse says, do not forget the things which your eyes have seen. All the things that we like see and know cause a damage. We cannot forget all those things and how, how horrendous they are. Whether it's drugs or alcohol or stupid behavior, like immorality, promiscuity. And there's, there's a reason why all this all this stuff has consequences. Because it's not, it's not good. God, God puts a, like a warning light on stuff. Like this isn't gonna, this, this is something to be avoided. It burns, it's gonna ruin, it's gonna ruin things. And so, rather than understand that every, every single thing in the creation has a, like a deep and intense purpose and lesson that we're supposed to see and understand and learn from, what do people do? They devise a way to try to work around it. They create condoms. Or they create some kind of health, health treatment so people can kill themselves with drugs and alcohol and live longer or get a liver transplant. People are so stupid. Why, why does it take so much pain and suffering for us to wake up and finally finally see the things that we do or we're murdering ourselves by, by doing these things. Step number three is to regret the sin. We can only regret the sin once we have distance from it and once we begin to understand and appreciate how good it is to be clean and sober, to have some kind of sanity, however however much or however little that is. Enjoy the blessing that God gives someone for doing what he says. Then, then only can we look back at our life and just be completely disgusted and revolted at our, at our previous actions. Then we can regret the sin. A person has to confess Verbally, Rambam rules that without a verbal confession, there is no teshuva. There is no no true repentance. Their, their teshuva is incomplete without verbally confessing their sins before God by saying, "I have sinned by doing such and such. I regret what I have done. I am ashamed and shall never do this again." Now, this is the difference between. Pretty much every 12-step program and the truth 
which is where all the all the stuff that works they got it from the teachings of the Jewish sages especially especially the Rambam or Moshe Ben Maimon you can't say one day at a time I mean obviously it, sh it should be obvious a person can't live more than one day at a time we have to make a commitment from the get-go it is always going to be forever like there's no more however many times that is it's like forever and ever and ever it's not one day it's i'm stopping and i'm never doing it again ever whatever whatever it is whether it's promiscuity or being a drug addict or an alcoholic or an overeater or addicted to pornography or whatever it is there's no one day at a time there's I'm stopping and I'm doing everything I possibly can to run away from it and if we fail we do it again and again and again and again and again but after a certain number of failures we have to look at our actions and think why why do we continue to continue to fail we have to delve on everything that surrounds everything that surrounds the failure and get down and dig with our shovel to get down to the root of why this thing keeps happening over and over again why don't we have success did we build a fence? At least as much as we possibly could. Did we learn about the consequences of our actions? Did we see what's going to be the end? And are we constantly holding that in our mind? And the deep visualization of the consequences of our actions if we turn back do we realize we're going to end up in a coma in the gutter crushed and bleeding out or a bloated corpse where all our family is surrounding us crying their eyes out wishing that they had done more to try to help us And burning that into our soul so we never, ever forget. And if we make one, one tiny excuse for anything that leads us to slip back in that, not, not just to it, in, in that direction whatsoever. We have to immediately correct our actions. And then the most important part is passing the test which Robert Irwin says there will be tests and Baruch Hashem he is always right there will be lots of tests and if we haven't learned and done all this stuff that I've been talking about we're not gonna we're not gonna pass at all so,